North Korea said on Friday it had tested a new solid fuel intercontinental ballistic missile, the Hwasong 18. State media said it was to quote radically promote its nuclear counterattack capability, with this footage of the test launch airing on state television. North Korean state media outlet KCNA released photos of leader Kim Jong un watching the launch, accompanied by his wife, sister, and daughter. North Korea has criticized recent US South Korean joint military exercises as escalating tensions and has stepped up its weapons tests in recent months. Russian shelling of a residential building in the eastern Ukrainian city of Slavyansk has killed at least eight people, including a toddler, and injured 21 others. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky offered his condolences to the families of the victims and condemned what he called Moscow's ceaseless campaign of murder and terror. With Russian mercenaries advancing westwards from the city of Bakhmut, Ukrainian troops are gearing up for a highly anticipated and large-scale counter-offensive. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has been brought to safety after an explosion went off just before he was due to give a campaign speech. Police have detained a suspect for allegedly throwing a smoke bomb. Kishida was visiting the port city of Wakayama during local elections. The incident comes nine months after former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was assassinated while holding a campaign speech. Free men at last. A momentous moment not only for them personally, but politically too. Around 900 prisoners will be released as part of a prisoner swap between Saudi Arabia and the Iran-backed Houthis. The exchange will happen over three days, part of a deal reached in Switzerland last month. The International Committee for the Red Cross is overseeing the transportation of these men to Saudi Arabia and Yemen. Among those being freed, Yemen's former defense minister and also the brother of the president. The result of negotiations between the two sides to seek an end to the near nine-year war. The American B-52 heavy bomber flew over the Korean peninsula once again on Friday, participating in a joint air drill alongside the South Korean Air Force. South Korean fighter jets, including the F-35A and F-15K, joined forces with American F-16 combat jets for this exercise. This demonstration of enhanced military cooperation featuring the nuclear-capable American aircraft comes just a day after North Korea's most recent ballistic missile launch. Jack Teixeira appeared in front of a federal judge Friday in Boston. The Massachusetts Air National Guardsman accused of leaking highly classified military intelligence records online was charged with unlawfully removing and retaining those classified materials. The FBI arrested Teixeira on Thursday in Massachusetts. Intelligence experts say that the leak may have caused broad-scale damage to Ukraine by revealing elements of the country's battle plans in its war with Russia, and that it puts sources and methods of intelligence gathering at risk and damages relations with allies, even close ones. Germany is pulling the plug on nuclear energy, ending a six-decade-long program that saw one of Europe's strongest protest movements. These are its three remaining nuclear power stations. And this marks one of the last times steam will rise from their cooling towers. Their shutdown was set for last summer, but was delayed after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, which sent energy prices soaring and spawned fears of shortages around the world.
Germany pledged to quit nuclear power following the 2011 Fukushima disaster in Japan. Once responsible for a third of Germany's energy production, it made up just 6% of it last year, compared to 44% from renewables. Putting his country back on the world stage, Lula da Silva arrived in Shanghai aiming to reverse the isolationist policy of his predecessor Jair Bolsonaro. Where Bolsonaro was highly critical of China, Lula is determined to repair the relationship with Brazil's most important trading partner, and trade talks will dominate this visit. But Lula says he also wants to work with China to mediate an end to the war in Ukraine.